Father's Day is nearly here, so give your dad and your mum, I guess, the gift of a tidy downstairs, thanks to Manscaped. Your dad will join the 8 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with the family jewels. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code SKILLUP at manscaped.com. Hello, today we will discuss Gollum. Before we begin, I would like to make clear one thing. Contrary to popular belief, I do not like making videos like this, especially when it comes to smaller games from smaller teams operating on smaller budgets. I actually work pretty hard to help elevate the work of any developers and AA projects on my channel, because I think a lot of the best creativity that this industry has to offer happens in those segments. So I work hard to put a spotlight on that stuff, but at the same time, I also think it's my job to warn people when something is really bad especially when that thing isn't selling at the $20 price point or even the $40 price point, but is going to market at 60 US dollars for current gen consoles. At that point, it's like, okay, you are fair game. That price point brings with it a certain expectation of quality and content. And let me tell you right now, Gollum does not come within a middle earth mile of meeting any of those expectations. What really tipped me over the edge though, were the deluxe edition upgrades for this, AKA the precious edition. If you give this publisher another $10, you get Sindarin voiceover for the elves. Otherwise, they just speak Westron. I've never heard of a game paywalling law accurate dialogue, but okay. That $10 also gets you a law compendium, which is literally a menu of law entries like every other game just has without charging you for it. Uh, this is how it's formatted. It looks like placeholder. When you click on lore items, you haven't unlocked yet. Nothing happens. When you click on items you have unlocked, it's this weird scrolling text at the bottom only, leaving the space at the top unused. It's also written very amateurishly, full of grammatical errors and very odd wording choices. Like, listen to this. Having betrayed his old and noble family in Ithilien, the Candleman has been in Sauron's service for a long time. Nevertheless, he still remembers a life with his family, sometimes yearning for it, full stop. But while he's being intimidated and controlled by Sauron's totalitarian system, turning his back on the Dark Lord is not an easy choice to make. Now, would you describe Sauron's rule as totalitarian? I don't know, seems a bit mechanical to me, a bit poli sci 101. How about malevolent? How about tyrannous? What about anything other than totalitarian? Because in a game based on one of the greatest literary works in history, using words that don't take the fun out of things kind of matters. Finally, there's one other thing you'll get as part of the precious edition, emotes. A package of six emotes for Gollum. You press down on the D-pad and he will do something. Here's a look at one of the emotes. That's it. That's what they put behind a paywall. It was at that moment, sitting there watching Gollum awkwardly chase an elephant beetle, that I remembered that this version of the game that I was playing was 70 US dollars. And I was like, all right, I should probably warn people about this video game. Let's start by talking about what this game actually is, because I guarantee you it's absolutely not what you expect. Gollum is a largely original story. It piggybacks off the events of the books to deliver a new and hopefully non-canon chapter in Tolkien's epic saga. Gollum has been seized by the Dark Lord's forces, and after his torture and interrogation, is thrown into the dungeons of Barad-dûr. From there, we know that Gollum will eventually escape, heading westward to meet up with Frodo and Sam so that he can Sherpa them into Mordor. This game is meant to tell the story of that escape and that westward journey. I can speak to the escape part because I've played that, but I can't speak to the rest because after finishing around half of this game, I just can't bring myself to play any more of it. So we all know Gollum, we've either read the books or we've seen the movies multiple times. Gollum is iconic. He's this wriggly, slimy, loathsome wretch. He is meek and pitiful and disarming in one moment, and in the very next he is dangerous and formidable, turning his surprising strength and cunning against his foes. He's intelligent, but he's ultimately a primal creature, all of his higher functions ground down by his obsession with the ring. Now he thrives in the darkness, he hunts to survive, he gets by on instinct, and he's utterly alone because no relationship matters to him except one, his relationship to the ring. 
So if I was to say to you that there's a Golem game coming that tells the story of his escape from Barador and his journey westward, you'd likely have a picture in your mind of how that begins. You'd likely imagine Golem quickly slipping through the net after his interrogation, his desire to be reunited with the ring so strong that he throws caution to the wind, attempting any and all means of escape, no matter how desperate. Not so much. Instead, at least the first half of Golem is kind of like a life sim, where you do chores in the minds of Barador in order to ingratiate yourself to the ruler, some guy named the Candleman, who himself is in the middle of some palace intrigue involving his daughter and one of Sauron's emissaries. Golem will make friends during his time in the mines, choosing whether to eventually betray them or not. He will also breed a bird companion that will view Golem as his father and will obey his commands. At one point, Golem will get a human companion that he can boss around while doing chores and solving water puzzles. If it sounds like I'm exaggerating, I promise you I am not. Gollum does begin with the story of his capture by the Nazgul and his torture, culminating in his naming of Baggins and the Shire. At that point, Gollum is now a prisoner of Sauron, and he's cast into the dungeons. It's there that he begins his life as a working slave. You are taken down into the pits, and your first task is given to you. It's to herd some pig things into a pen. To do this, you just run into the pen, and then climb up a wall, and then pull a switch while the pig thing waits patiently below. That's it. You will do this again after that, and then that's the end of that section. A job well done for Gollum. It's then on to the next chore. Miners keep dying while working in the extreme heat, and you need to go around collecting their tags. It's not clear why, but that's what you gotta do. So you essentially run around these very poorly designed levels, hoping that you stumble upon a corpse. You do this seven times, and then you go back to your cell to sleep. Like it's fucking Persona. Anyway, the next day begins and it's time for more chores. This time I have to crawl into small caves to detonate barrels. I just crawl or climb for a little bit and then I go back the way I came. I do this three times and then I go back to bed. <laughs> there are more chores like this, one of which involves going around and pulling levers to dump slop into some slop pools. But by far the worst is this bird breeding mini game that you have to do. At one point, you're told that you need to breed a bird for some reason. I'm not exactly sure why. You're not given any instruction. You just kind of have to figure it out. What you need to do is put a certain number of logs in the fire, pump the bellows a certain number of times, take an egg from the nest, prepare some weird colored liquid thing, dip the egg into the water, and then take the egg somewhere else, pull a lever, and if you've done it correctly, you get a bird. But if you've messed up any one of those steps, like putting in one log too many or pumping the bellows, not it, it, the whole thing falls apart and you need to do it all over again. So first of all, why the fuck is there a bird breeding mini game in a golem game? And secondly, and I cannot stress this enough, why the fuck is there a bird breeding mini game in a golem game? I'll tell you why. All of this is an elaborate setup for one of the worst implemented companion systems I've ever seen in a video game. At certain points, you get to control this bird that you've bred. That involves pressing up on the D-pad and then ordering them to collect things for you, like this. Go, go. Oh. It does what we says. It's super janky, and it's just plain weird that Gollum has a pet bird. Gollum eats birds, he doesn't father them. Anyway, it's also really poorly implemented from a gameplay perspective. At one point, I was at this section where I was just so hopelessly stuck. I was running around everywhere, trying to figure out where to go next. It must have been a good 15 minutes of me running and jumping and crawling every which way I could to find my way into this room. Turns out that what the game wanted me to do was use my bird companion to steal the keys hanging on the wall. But the only way I would have known to do that would have been to notice the prompt appearing at the bottom right corner of the screen when I stood in a very specific location, alerting me to the fact that I could now control my bird companion and he could get the keys for me. Ridiculous. Bring us that nice one. Fetch the keys. 
So all of this sucks, but the developers actually doubled down on it at one point. Eventually, after literally years spent in this prison, Gollum is now a grizzled veteran and some fresh meat arrives in his cell. Gollum decides to be nice to this person and help him survive his first day, like it's the Shawshank Redemption. Anyway, remember that herding minigame I showed you earlier? Well, you get to do that again, only this time you're commanding your new friend as he does it. Here's how that looks. Harry. Yes. I mean, where to begin with this? Uh, this is true though. When I heard that I was going to be directing this human via the companion system to do this pig herding thing, I immediately thought to myself, oh yeah, this is going to be some good footage. <laughs> sure enough, it did not disappoint. Uh, this is actually super annoying to do, by the way. I just sat there for so long trying to figure this out because it turns out that you kind of need to send him to a location, but before he reaches that spot, you need to send him elsewhere. And if you do that, then the pigs will actually just run straight past him and then they'll go into the pen and then just stare blankly at the wall while you command this peon to close the gate behind them. I just let this whole thing sit for a moment to see if anything interesting would happen, but it didn't. So I just ordered my guy to close the gate and then I could just move on with my life. So that is just a taste of life in the mines. I don't want to give you the impression that that's all you're doing for the first half of the game because there is other stuff, which we will get to, but these things are the defining elements of the first half of this game because of how bad they are and how out of place they feel. Who thought it would be a good idea to get Gollum doing any of this stuff? This really feels as though the developer had a different Middle Earth themed game in mind, perhaps one starring like a random human or a hobbit that somehow gets imprisoned. If you dropped anyone else into these gameplay scenarios, it starts to make sense. But Gollum breeding birds and herding pigs while making friends with his cellmates and trying to win over an overseer embroiled in Machiavellian machinations? Like, what is any of this? I guess we should probably talk about story now. So as I said, this is an original story written in collaboration with a number of Tolkien experts, apparently. Again, you really imagine Gollum to be a game focused on Gollum's very bleak, very violent path out of captivity and towards the ring bearer, but it's kind of not. A lot of the story is actually about someone called the Candleman, who is this fallen noble who serves Sauron, and he has a daughter who seems to be betraying him every chance she gets, and milling about for some reason or another is someone called the Mouth of Sauron. All these people talk to each other all the time and Gollum kind of just sits there as they do so since the Candleman kind of adopts Gollum as his personal lackey. It's again, just so out of place. Why is palace intrigue a feature of this game? Gollum is not a character that is meant to be in those settings. He is not meant to be traipsing through gilded halls, eavesdropping on statecraft. He's meant to be in caves, throttling orcs and eating sushi while whispering obsessively to himself about his pressures. It doesn't help that the technology supporting this storytelling is frankly terrible. Here's your average cutscene in Gollum. There is better here. Frail man can tell us secrets now. Remember the dwarves I mentioned earlier? One of them told me something once. Those buildings are up there, above the bridge, see? He had to build them. Dangerous work. But after a while, he knew where the guards watch. He'd steal red stones and hide them in a cave near the bridge. Just one stone each day, so the guards wouldn't notice. Why? Why do you think? What happened? Well... One day, he slipped and fell. <laughs> That's not a nice story. Mm, I suppose not. Okay, a lot to take in here. Did you see the part where the old man's beard flipped upwards suddenly whenever he kind of looked upwards? Uh, did you catch the part where his mouth stopped moving even though he was still talking apparently? Did you catch the moment when Gollum's facial animations ended and his entire face falls flat and his pupils suddenly dilate? How about the graphical glitching on Gollum's head? 
This is far from the only example, mind you. Facial animations in this game are terminally bad. Some of the worst I've seen from any modern game. I mean, look, take a look at this. What's the secret? Hmm? No, forget about it. Has it food, eh? Has it nice fish hidden away? It's impossible to take this story seriously on its own merits because it feels like the wrong story to be telling for this character, for Gollum. It's dialogue centric for a character that is ultimately very physical, defined by what he does more than what he says. But it becomes downright farcical to try to take this straight face story seriously when the characters themselves cannot keep straight faces. But again, the game doubles down on this. There is a dialogue minigame thing that you are pushed into whenever Gollum needs to make a decision. It's meant to mirror the tension inherent in Gollum's split personality. Here's how that plays out. Not just, not just us. No, not alone. That's right. Who else? Two detonations. Two. One on either side. We had eyes on your side. Who was on the other? He will know his terrible light sees right through us. As you can see, there's not much to it. You just select options, hoping that they're the right ones to satisfy the wind condition. And if you guess right, then you get to do the thing that you wanted to do, which in this instance was rat out the old man who's been helping you all along. I don't know what might have happened had I chosen a different course of action, mind you. That would involve playing through the game again to find out. I can't see people finishing this game once, let alone more than that. Let's talk now about technicals. So, facial animations aren't the only technical shortcoming in this package, unsurprisingly. This is the swing animation for Gollum. Death animations are often half-baked and missing visuals and sound, like this. Or this one. They're still hot. There is a recurring bug that sees Gollum's hair get both highlighted and pixelated, like this. Many actions in game do not have accompanying animations, like this one. Let me just open this for you. Good luck. When exploring the world, you will often encounter frustrating invisible walls. Sometimes you'll get stuck behind those walls, like here. <laughs> Sometimes text will remain on screen that isn't meant to. The only way to remove it is to restart the game. Sometimes shit just doesn't work. Here I died and when I reloaded the checkpoint, I could move my camera around, but nothing else worked. The only way to fix this was to restart the game. Sometimes certain in-game events don't trigger, which totally blocks your progress. Here I died because this game's camera is horrendous and I couldn't see the ledge I was about to drop into. When I reloaded, the cave door would not open and there was nothing I could do. Restarting the game did not fix this issue. I had to actually restart the entire level from the beginning. At a more foundational level, Gollum runs poorly and looks terrible while doing it. This is an Unreal game that doesn't do any kind of shader compilation. I was getting constant stuttering while playing. Some of it's so bad that I'd call it unplayable. As usual, changes in settings and resolutions did nothing to improve that. There is a very strong motion blur effect that is present at all times and it cannot be toggled off, even on PC, which is where I reviewed the game. Even though the environments you're moving through are all fairly small, there's still a huge amount of pop-in occurring at all times. And yeah, maybe you could forgive some of this stuff if the game was a looker, right? But look at it. It looks terrible. I would remind you that they released the official recommended specs for this game. And if you want to play it at 4K, max settings, ray tracing on, they want you to have an RTX 4090 and then set DLSS to balanced. It's like, why? What is the GPU doing at that point? Because it certainly can't be working at full load to render whatever this is. All right, let's talk about gameplay. You may have noticed that to this point, I have not spoken about core gameplay in Golem, stuff like stealth, traversal, and combat. There's a reason for that, and it's similar to the reason that the developers have included all of these weird side activities and mini games. It's because the core gameplay itself is nowhere near strong enough to stand on its own two feet. So the game needs all this extra shit packed into it to distract you from how bad that core gameplay is. So what is that core gameplay? Well, firstly, there's no combat. Gollum can sneak up behind orcs if they are alone, and he can strangle them with this very odd animation. What's to talk about backings, does it? Where is it? Where is it now? No. 
<laughs> However, if there is more than one orc, or the orc is wearing a helmet, then Gollum cannot attack them, and he has to avoid them. If they catch him, here's what the death animation looks like. Yeah. So I finished five out of this game's 10 chapters. Uh, just to give you an idea, I think I've killed a total of three orcs that entire time. So yeah, killing orcs is possible, but it's definitely not a big focus of the gameplay loop. Stealth is a big focus, but it's the most basic bare bones stealth you can imagine. It's hide behind some boxes, it's hide in shadows to become invisible, it's throw rocks at things to make noises, etc. What's really bad about this is the enemy AI, which is just comical in its patrol pathing. Like for example, this is one enemy that I had to get past at one point. So, can you stealth in Gollum? Yes, absolutely. Is it good? Absolutely not. But it's a hell of a lot better than the game's central mechanic, climbing. As soon as you begin Gollum, you're led through a sort of tutorial section, and I immediately groaned because the first thing that I saw were all these yellow lines etched into the rock. And it's like, not this again. We just did this with Jedi Survivor. Which, to be fair, was fine because they often did a lot of work to make your handholds organically blend into the environment rather than it looking like Sauron asked one of his orcs to go out there and use high-vis paint to highlight a path for Gollum. Yes, many games do exactly this, but I promise you, Gollum does it way worse. Gollum's overall moveset is pretty remarkable, actually. I mean, this guy can really jump from ledge to ledge, and he can even jump back behind him. That is a central mechanic, because the game will often put your next handhold behind you, and the only way to know it's there is that you get a little prompt, which will pop up in the bottom right corner of the screen, suggesting that you jump backwards. Gollum can wall run like a fucking Titanfall pilot. I'm not sure that's what Tolkien had in mind when he wrote Gollum, but there you have it. Uh, we've already seen Gollum's exceptional talent on the high bar swing, so no need to retread that. But you know what he can't do? Get out of a body of water. If you fall into water, you're pretty much fucked. Like, you're kind of stuck there until you find some sort of lowered section allowing Gollum to crawl out. This is a creature that spent hundreds of years living in a watery cave, but apparently he can't hoist himself up over a one foot ledge. The controls in this game, utterly abysmal. One of the worst controlling games I've played in a long time. When you are traversing, the number one thing that will kill you are these controls. They are so inconsistent, Gollum randomly changing speeds pre or post jump, snapping to ledges sometimes and not others, failing to grab handholds when you clearly tell him to, not wall running when he's supposed to. It reaches the point where you just have absolutely no faith whatsoever in the core controls, and much of your progression is about experimenting to see how the controls will respond during the specific traversal challenges. You'll learn that Gollum will shorten a jump here, jump unusually far there, that he'll miss a handhold here if you don't take the jump, at a certain angle, etc. It's not about controlling Gollum, it's about controlling the controls and figuring out all of the busted shit that's been crowbarred into each traversal section to make it semi-functional, so you can then either lean into or avoid all of that duct tape. Like I said, I have only half finished this game. The breaking point for me was here when I had just done this really big, really annoying traversal puzzle, hoping that it would culminate in my finally escaping Barador and seeing the rest of the game. Instead, it led me from the mines of Barador into the sewers of Barador. Immediately, it became clear to me that I was about to do some big, elaborate water temple style puzzle where I had to raise and lower the water level. To make that even more fun, I had to babysit my new best friend, the companion who I ordered around during that herding minigame earlier. I once again had to order him to move, only this time it was across platforms once I'd raised them. He of course couldn't figure this out for himself, he had to rely on Gollum to tell him when to walk. At some point I fell into the water and I couldn't find a way back up even though there were really low ledges that should have been easily climbable. I thought that maybe if I lowered the water again I might be able to get out, so I tried to order my companion to flip a nearby lever. He just stood there and did absolutely nothing. And at that point, I just alt f forward and I labeled that recording as that's enough. Because indeed, it was. 
So, yeah, obviously Golem. It's just a top to bottom disaster. I don't think anyone had high hopes for this, but I don't think anyone expected it to be this bad. I mean, this had some serious marketing push behind it, right? Like a slot at Jeff Keighley's Game Awards, which is really expensive to get. We've seen tons of trailers, hands on with select press, the works, like a full marketing push that would have cost millions of dollars, I'd say. That sort of hype brings with it expectations. If a publisher is willing to spend that big, it probably means the game is good, right? Same thing goes for that price point. Again, if it's a $20 game, you take the good with the bad. You understand that a budget title is often going to have its fair share of problems. A $40 game, that bar is raised. You're operating in that AA category. People expect some better production value, but they'll still forgive some gameplay shortcomings and technical issues so long as the core game is good. $60? Man, you better be ready to bring it because expectations at that price point are pretty high. And if you are going to charge $70 for what is essentially the complete version of this game, then you had better be ready for people to be really, really pissed off when they play something this unfinished, this unpolished, and this substandard. Those precious edition paywalled items alone are enough to make this feel like a real piss take. But when combined with just how bad the rest of this package is, the way this has been priced and marketed feels very deceptive and very exploitative. This is by far the worst game I've played this year, and I absolutely do not recommend it. What do you get for the hairy man who has everything? Something to remove the hair, I guess? I mean, if dad's hairy on his chest, his arms, his legs, and his back, you gotta guess he's hairy everywhere else too. No need to ask for the details, just assume and grab him the perfect Father's Day gift, the Manscaped Performance Package 4.0, the ultimate package for his package. Inside the Performance Pack 4.0, you'll find the Essential Lawn Mower 4.0, waterproof, cordless body trimmer, and a ton of other liquid formulations to round out his grooming routine. The trimmer features a ceramic blade designed to cut hair on loose skin and to reduce grooming accidents thanks to the advanced skin safe technology. Tell you what, a lot of dads start to get all that nose and ear hair. Not nice. Well, good news. The performance package also includes the Weed Whacker 2.0 that'll quickly, easily, and painlessly remove all those stubborn hairs. This beautiful bundle also comes with a crop preserver ball deodorant, crop reviver toner, performance boxer briefs, and a travel bag to hold all his goodies. The performance package 4.0 covers all of dad's bases head to toe, the best bang for his shebang. Father's Day is just around the corner, so if you want to get a gift sorted before time runs out, head straight over to manscaped.com and use offer code SKILLUP to get 20% off plus free shipping. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com using offer code SKILLUP at checkout. Manscaped, helping your dad shave his balls. <laughs> Thanks, Manscaped, for sponsoring the video and thank you for watching it.